in today's session you are going to see some more example for natural deduction uh, so first example that we take over here is negation p implies p and with that we are going to derive to p okay now we want to break this implies so with the single term in the premises it is really hard to break the implies right how does an implies works here given if I, if then condition and give, uh, and also some more solutions will be given so based on that we are going to break it okay so if some condition some solution is given if the condition is true or false is given then you are able to break the implies <laughs> or else it is really hard so first step is write down this negation p implies p as it is so this is your premises so in order to prove this premises we are not able to break this implies directly so in that case what we have to do we have to take an assumption over here and the next step is when you are taking an assumption it is always better like in the conclusion we have a single term so whenever you have a single term in the conclusion to be proved it is better to take the reverse of it <clears throat> that is implies of it contradiction of the conclusion so we are going to prove by contradiction method so i'm just going to p is given in the conclusion so i'm just going to take it as negation p and uh, somewhere in the proof uh, this as an assumption and somewhere in my proof i'm going to prove it as a false statement okay when something false is proven what does that means when something false is proven it means that the taken assumption is wrong okay so with that i'm going to prove it now i have taken negation p as the assumption and the third step is by combining these two what does that mean like negation p implies p this is a this is a given premises and negation p we have taken we are going to assume this is a valid statement when these two satisfies what does that means we have to take the result right negation p implies p this is implies elimination from step 1 to 2 it derives to p okay now given negation p is valid and p is also valid is that possible no right so this is your implies elimination condition okay implies elimination of statement 2 1 3 it derives to false okay so see see the statement here like we start with an assumption and by some steps it is proven to be false so what does that means that means that the taken assumption is false okay so that is your in, uh, negation insertion of step 2 to 4 starting from the step 2 to 4 it derives to false taken some assumption it derives to false so we have to insert a negation to the assumption taken the assumption taken is negation p and we are going to eliminate one more assumption one more negation to it so what is negation of negation p here by double negation elimination we can write it as p double negation elimination of statement 5 it derives to p so this is the conclusion needed got it simple right so this is really easy like uh, when you just want to break the implies we cannot directly break it with a single statement so surely we have to go for an assumption and based on your conclusion you have to try to take up an assumption over here okay so you can have any number of assumptions into your proofs <clears throat> but the thing is when you are taking assumptions it should not overlap say so i can have an assumption here i can have an assumption here i can have an assumption here so this assumption has to be proven within this this assumption has to be proven within this and this assumption has to be proven within this okay so we should not have an assumption like this here i have assumed assumed something and uh, here i have assumed something and this concludes here and this concludes here it is not allowed okay when you take an assumption within that half we have to have a conclusion okay it should not overlap with the other assumptions over here so that is the only rule that you want to learn when you are using assumptions okay now we'll go to the next example here next example is p and q r p and r with this premises we are going to prove p and q r r okay so listen to the statement clearly now uh, this is a place where you want to eliminate your r over here okay so in the given statement we have to eliminate this r so how will you eliminate an r your r insertion is easy but when you want to eliminate an r we cannot directly do it right so we have to take this as an assumption and we have to take this as an assumption separately now with this you have to prove to a term with this assumption you have to prove to this term if both the terms are equal then we can conclude that the given term is valid 
So in the given example, so this is the term that you want to prove. Okay, so by taking P and Q as an assumption, if you are able to derive this, and similarly, when you are able to take P and R and derive to this conclusion, if both the conclusions matches, then we can say that this conclusion, this term that is resultant is valid. Okay, so I'll show you with this example how it is actually working. So uh, we'll just write the premises. Our elimination is a bit difficult, but when you look into the problem clearly, you are able to understand. So the given premises is P and Q R P and R. I'll just take this capital R. This R and R remain same for me. This is a given premises. Okay, so let, I'll just write it as capital R here and capital R here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take Take the first term as an assumption, P and Q. I'm going to take this as an assumption. Okay. So when you take P and Q as a valid statement with and elimination of statement two, I can write it as either P or Q. This is and elimination of statement two. P and Q is valid. So P is also valid. Q is also valid. Now, what is the conclusion needed here? I want Q, R, R. Now Q is valid. I want Q, R, R to be proven. So how, uh, like using R insertion, if one statement is valid, I can merge this statement together. Like with, we can include R and the statement can be merged with any other statements. P, R, 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 Q, R, S, or anything. So now Q is valid. So I can insert an R to statement four and I can write it as Q, R, R. So this is also a valid statement. R insertion works in this category. Like when one statement is valid, you can introduce any new statement and you can mix it up with an R over here. You can connect using your R. Okay, now you have Q, R, R and P is also valid. So by and insertion of statement three and five, we can write it as P and Q, R, R. Okay, this is your sixth statement. So this is the conclusion that is needed. So by taking this assumption of one, one side, we are able to prove that P and Q R R is valid. Okay, so with that, we cannot stop the conclusion. The reason is R works like taking one half of an assumption, you have to derive to the stop. And similarly, taking another half, that is P and R. And if you are able to prove the same, derive to the same conclusion, then it is valid. Okay. So seventh statement is I'm going to take this as an assumption and I'm going to try to prove this conclusion over here. Okay, now you have and and elimination of step seven. I can write it as P, R, R. Seventh step, eighth step, ninth step is this can be break and can be eliminated from the step seven. I can write it as either P or R. When P and R is valid, both P is valid and R is also valid. And the 10th statement is what is needed? I, I need Q, R, R is needed. Okay, now R is valid by R insertion of capital R. I can write the statement as Q, R, R. Okay, when one statement is valid, you can combine that with any other statement using R connectives. Okay, now the 11th statement is P is valid and Q, R, R is valid. So I can write this P and Q, R, R is valid by and insertion of step eight and 11, sorry, 10. Okay, now what happened? We have taken this second half of your R connectives and we have proven this as a conclusion, sorry. Proven this as a conclusion. So both the conclusion matches are so this is also matched and this is also matched. So this is the conclusion needed. So with that, 12th statement is important. 12th step by R elimination, sorry, uh, it is R elimination. R elimination of statement one using 226, that is proven the first half and uh, 7 to 11, that is proven the second half we are going to prove that P and Q are R is valid. So this is the conclusion needed. 
Okay, so this is how an R elimination works. See, when you keep on solving some of the problems, you'll understand how actually this natural deduction works. Okay, and you are able to trace it out. So it is better to take a load and load of problems and try to find a conclusion or solution for it. Okay, thank you.